All right, the next part is actually building up controls for this arm. And uh, very simply, we're gonna create an IK handle for the arm. Um, and again, we're on 2023, IK handles, mm, some of you already know, are a little odd uh, on how they function. But let's take a look, see if we can get it working for us. So I'm gonna double click this, and this is the IK handle tool, or we can go up here to skeleton, uh, create IK handle, where's that? There it is, option box. And the reason we wanna hop in the option box is if you recall, we did this for our head already, for that give just a little bit of wiggle with our head, yeah. Um, we wanna make sure to reset that tool or just go here to the current solver and make sure you're on rotate plane solver. So the differences here is uh, previously, we used this tool from two single joint chains. So if we had joint one going to joint two and we use that single chain joint solver, what we're gonna to use today is gonna be the rotating plate joint solver. And this wants us to have going from joint one, and then we can skip a couple of joints and then go to the last joint that we want to have this connection to. And very particularly, typically with your IK handle, what you wanna do is a three joint system and our three joints, shoulder, elbow, and wrist. So let's use this. So just make sure you're on rotate plane solver, leave all this stuff alone. And we're gonna go from the shoulder to the wrist and there we go and so now when we go to move this we it creates an ik handle you can see i've already created a couple here in my scene so it creates an ik handle for us and we want to rename that and moving this ik handle you can see we start to get some movement on our arm let's go ahead and rename this l underscore ik handle underscore wrist or I could put L underscore wrist IK handle. Well, either one, kind of both work. Uh, you don't want to do what I was just doing, if you or if you do rather, you just want to undo, make sure you don't leave that because notice here it has particular translates. So we can't zero those out or else it'll break our, whoops, come on, numpad. Why is that not working? Anyway, yeah, exactly. If you try to zero it out, it breaks your rig. So don't do that. So I'm gonna undo, make sure it gets back to that default where it was. Um, Instead, much like our head with the neck and the jaw and the, the, the head, I already said head, <laughs> and the eyes, um, we're going to create these NURBS curves to help us out. So I'm going to create a NURBS circle. I'm going to hide my geometry so I can snap that directly to the wrist by holding V on my keyboard and middle mouse clicking and dragging so it snaps to any of the uh, joints that I have. Then I'm going to rotate this up 90 degrees. My numpad is being odd. There we go. Numlock was on. Cool. So I've rotated this up 90 degrees. Uh, and then now I can bring my geometry back. Or I can template it so I can always see it. Just kind of see through it. Or enable wireframe. Whatever you want to do. Whatever your method is there that you prefer. Uh, and I'm going to bring this down scale-wise. So it's around my wrist. I've isolated it. And the reason being is I'm gonna to go to these control vertices and uh, I'm going to, first off, turn off symmetry. And that way I can kind of scale them and make a star here. Uh, control one to bring everything back. Um, I had hidden polygons with alt two, so I'll bring those back. So the reason being that I don't wanna just leave it as a circle and I want to kind of shape it into like either a star or literally any other shape, whatever you feel comfortable with. Like if you just want to kind of flatten out one edge, uh, just as long as this has a different shape than a circle. The reason being is it's pretty uh, standard for rigs to have a um, uh, to have FK as circles and IK controls as something other than circles. Uh, so this is just one way. We'll talk about other methods of creating nerves, curves, um, unique shapes moving forward. Uh, but I just want to scale this in to kind of match that up. Fantastic. I can also rotate it. Uh, like if I go back here to object mode, rotate it to kind of match up with the direction of my wrist. Uh, that I could also do that and be good to go there. In fact, I think I will. Let's do that from the top view so I can get a good rotation to match up with. Uh, the geometry and kind of the joints there. I think that's solid. So once I have that control created, we're going to freeze. So I'm gonna go freeze those transforms. Yay, we've zeroed it all out. Let's delete that history. 
while we're at it. Let's also rename this. This is going to be uh, L underscore IK underscore wrist control. And then we're going to give it, go ahead and give it the offset group. So group it to itself, center that pivot to it, uh, and then go down here and just copy that naming convention back up and then just put underscore uh, GRP. Also, I thought I named this IK handle. Maybe I didn't. Let's also go ahead and give this IK handle a name. Uh, I swear I did, but maybe I hit undo too many times. L underscore wrist underscore I key handle. Let me get rid of that three at the end. Uh, so uh, now it's just connecting these two up. We can simply do that by uh, uh, selecting the child and taking it to the parent and hitting P on our keyboard. So I'm going to select the child, the parent, and hit P on my keyboard. You know what? I'm actually going to backstep this a bit. Yeah, let's backstep this a bit because you know something that's bothering me about what I've done here, and I really don't want to rotate that uh, controller up. I'm just going to leave it. You know, even though it's a little offset, it's not too bad offset. I'm just going to leave it as it is. That way, the translation on the manipulator kind of looks proper. So again, freezing those transforms out, deleting that history. Um, and oops, I've hit undo too many times, so I got to rename this stuff. Uh, so this was L underscore I K underscore wrist. And I can underscore control and then group it to itself, copy that up, uh, and then underscore GRP and center the pivot of that group. And then same thing for the I key handle is just give it that L underscore I key wrist. And then it knows it's I key handle. Actually, I didn't even need to include the I key here because if we leave I key handle at the end, we know what that is. The thing is now I got to have the curve control the IK handle, which it currently doesn't. Quite a few ways. We could use parent constraints like we've done before. Uh, I'm just going to directly parent this. Uh, so I'm going to select the IK handle, the child, and take it to the parent, which is the NURBS curve, and hit P on my keyboard. So now when I go to select that control, I can move it around and I can zero it out without breaking our rig. Awesome. So the, the unfortunate thing about IK is we can't control where the elbow goes by default. And I say unfortunate, but it's actually not too unfortunate. Uh, so I am going to uh, select that IK handle, either in the outliner or this right here. And uh, actually we need to create a control for it first, my bad. So let's uh, create a control for that elbow. So I'll make another circle, I'm gonna hide my geometry so I can snap it, go to the move tool, press and hold V, middle mouse, click and drag to snap it to that elbow. I'm gonna rotate it this way, rotate it 90 degrees, scale it down and push it straight back. Bring, show my geometry so we can see it. And somewhere in this range of being that far back behind the elbow is good. Uh, so we can rename this L underscore IK underscore elbow underscore control, delete that history, uh, free, rather freeze those transforms and delete the history. There we go. And just like we did before, group it to itself, modify center pivot, or just click this button right here to also center your pivot and copy that name over to itself. Uh, and then add GRP to it so we know it's a group. So now using this IK handle and this elbow, I can create a new constraint up here called a pull vector. So again, select the IK handle, then the elbow control that we just created, constrain, pull vector. Oh, I, I did that in the inverse order, my bad. Select the handle and then, or I'm sorry, select the control and then the IK handle and do the constrain, pull vector. So now when I go to move this pull vector, the elbow follows. So when I go to move the wrist, that can move we can position that however we would like. And then I can move that IK handle, uh, uh, that pull vector for the uh, elbow around to position that elbow wherever I'd like it. Let's reset those back. And uh, that's the IK handle done for this arm. Let's talk about how we can switch this up a little bit now uh, to have an FK switch to it.